Yeah, yeah. It's very Doctor Who, in it. I'm a trans man. I'm not actually like super familiar with a lot of Doctor Who stuff, unfortunately. Oh, you like one of the Doctor Who enemies, man. There's a Doctor Who enemy that called the Weeping Angels, right? And what they do is when they get you, they don't actually kill you. I've heard about this. Oh my god, it's so fucking creepy. Please explain it though. The Weeping Angels are creepy themselves because they can only move when you're when you're not looking at them. But the thing about them, right, is they have this thing where they uh when they get you they don't kill you by like strangling you or whatever what they do is they send you back in time 80 years so that you so that you just die of old age on the smile. day you I get caught and it made my life so much so better. you live out what? like a life so when you get so like there's loads of cases Eight of like there was go. in the in the D. episode there's like these two characters and one of them gets caught and then just vanishes and then hi. the other one opens a box with some letters from them being like hi i'm writing this to you from the year 1950 and i'm 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 living in this house and i've got a wife and kids and stuff and he's like it's just i really you know i'm hoping this finds you well you know i'm, I'm sure i hope i'll be alive to see you again in the future but obviously he doesn't because he dies before he gets there. Jesus, fuck cool that's that? dark like, dude yeah like well. you like you just get teleported back in time to the amount of time you'd be alive for that's a yikes. One quarter of the way to Gapple. That is fucking horrific. <laughs> yeah. And then on top of that, the angels can only move when you're not looking at them. That includes blinking and shit. Bonjour, oh. Monsieur Minecraft. Le Pog less than three. I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> it's it's awful. I like creepy a lot. <laughs> uh, I, I showed you my favorite YouTube uh, horror series, right? I'm sure I did. I think you did. It's I want to um, say you did it on like a, a night where we just watched like fuck tons of weird shit. Yeah, yeah, it was in... <laughs> do you remember Real Sleep? Which one? Real Sleep. Uh, jog my memory? I, I might not. I hate myself now. There are no faces. There are no faces. Oh, oh my god, Phil. Have you not seen Real Sleep? Oh fuck, hold on. Oh my god, Phil. Do is we it a need YouTube to video? Real yeah. So to give you the context, right, Phil? So this channel is designed to be like... Okay, so can I can I let you in? Because I, I actually... <laughs> you promise you won't judge me here. I wrote, <laughs> I never, I never, never I wrote a paper on this channel. Uh, oh. Not not for any reason. <laughs> just because I like writing papers about Aww. things that I'm interested in. Right? And I wrote a Talk paper about, about this. I don't know if you call them a paper. I don't know what people are supposed to call them. But it's basically, um, it's basically like a school project that I can't hand in because I'm not at school. But um, Five So I wrote a paper about Local 58. And the way I open it in the introduction, which I thought sums it up pretty well, is what I wrote is that the description of Local 58 is it own local 58 only works only scares people who were born after the year like 1985 right so me then, yeah. yeah yeah and me and everyone yeah. <laughs> everyone in this chat probably, in this chat right? probably yeah, yeah so so the thing is with with because i showed it to my parents and i've shown it to like friends who are like older like in Three their 40s and stuff and they all aren't love. scared of it right and the reason being is because they they grew up in a world without digital and without like analog technology oh, analog, analog no. digitization is what the word i use so like vhs tapes and like a burning cds and whatever so they got to see that stuff slowly appear right and the way i described it is these videos give you the same feeling as being a kid like at your grandparents house your grandparents have gone to bed and you're up watching vhs tapes on their tv downstairs and you want to quickly pause it before it gets to the static at the end because you're scared of the sound of the static right <laughs> which you, you would is me i get that right and then and probably more applicable to people in this chat is it also is the same feeling as when you call when you type in a number for your mum? It, it's late and you're maybe out on your Three bike and you call the m number for your mother and you ring it and it goes Do -do -do. Do -do -do. The number you have dialed is not in use. Do -do -do. That it, it's that fear. It's that fear. These videos and the, the editing, the right. Oh, it's brilliant. I'm hyping it up too much. It's going to ruin it. But anyway, okay, which, tell me when you're, which, tell me when you're ready, which one? Which, which one? Real sleep. Real okay. sleep. Pulling up now. Real, real sleep isn't the one I would normally introduce people to, but because you're you're live, we'll just watch one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Right. Man, creepy shit is my is my. It's your thing. aesthetic. Uh, 
will, I will make another ARG before I die, and it'll be, and I'll do it far better than the last one, and it'll play on all this stuff I've learned. All okay, right. are you ready? Let's, let's go. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, I've, I feel like I've learned so much about this kind of horror, and I really want to use it. <laughs> how, how long is this? Five minutes. Five minutes. Chat, hold my hand. <laughs> <laughs> hold my hand. Go on, Phil. Uh, fuck. No. No, you fool. No. Oh, <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Okay. Go on. No. That's a, that's a myth. Am I going to get jump scared? No, no, no. That's the best thing about it. There's no jump scares. No jump scares. Okay, all, chat. You can relax like... on that one. No jump scares. No, dude. I it's felt all it. like It's all like intelligent horror. Um, facts? Yeah. Oh my god, don't. <laughs> Fuck. The frantic, nonsensical images. Fuck <laughs> off, dude. What does vestige mean? Uh, like, like a part, like a thing. Oh. So, dreaming is is a part of a primitive mind. Hmm. People tuned in to have a Minecraft. <laughs> And we're fucking hitting them with this the shit. Map. Oh, these you poor viewers. The map. Okay. Uh, okay. No more dreaming. This is what restful real sleep looks like. When you're just completely fucking out of it. No more dreaming. Anti-dream? The way I introduce this to people, you're going to hate this, but I tell them it's like a real thing to stop you dreaming. This video. Oh, you <laughs> motherfucker, dude. You piece, you piece of shit. <laughs> so, okay. So just follow, follow the guide. Follow the guide on the screen. Okay. Uh, right. No jump scares, chat. Don't worry. No, it's no jump scares. If you're a bit screamish, look away because it's just it's just gonna spook you out. Wait, that's an upside down face, right? What was that? Okay. This do be kind of creepy. Oh. Felt like it. It was still there for a second because it, because of the colours. There are no faces. There are no. Faces. I hate this. There are no faces. There are no faces. This is creepy as hell, Will. What the fuck is this, dude? There are no faces. Oh, I still see it. Dream, this is a dream. Sleeps, civilized tyrant. Let's see how it works. Do not follow those vessels. Final, we die into pirate belief. It's another threat. Dream, passengers, false. Avenger, what the f. Oh, okay. well, shit. <laughs> Fucking hell, dude. Good night. <laughs> oh, God.
What do you think of that? What the fuck? How cool <laughs> is that, man? How good is it? Oh, I hate it. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I, I hate it. I hate it so much. What the fuck? It's brilliant. Jesus. It's, it's, brilliant. It's, it's, it's so amazing. Actual I love it. spooky. Man, you... I, I can give you more horror yeah, hypotheticals if we're in the zone. I do like, I do want. All right, okay. What I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep playing the the block game, and then yeah. chat are just gonna be freaked out. Fun fact: the What would you do if uh, one day you were on your computer and suddenly the computer just quickly flicks onto a black screen, it. right? Just very briefly, uh -huh. and then it turns back on, and it's like, this is a government, this is a government emergency announcement. So, you know, blah blah blah, emergency, like, you know, the emergency broadcast system comes mm -hmm, up, right? Mm -hmm. And it says, and it just says, don't look at the sky. Close all windows in your house. Close all blinds. Do not look up at the sky. Whatever you do. Jesus Christ. That That's it. That's the end of the fucking scenario. And I love it so much because it's just so open-ended. And that's that's another one from this channel, actually. They do, they play our spin on it. But I actually saw it on Reddit first. The whole, don't look at the sky. Fucking hell, dude. <laughs> it's like thinking yeah, about like every like chills like, oh no oh my god fucking alien invasion would be the first thing i thought of yeah, um, yeah. either that or the Chat, sun has exploded and nobody's surviving this no faces. Good day. what about just don't look at the moon uh it's go it's going to crash into us yeah straight up just land on us it's gonna just like demolish the city and Sorry, not see a, a, a continent. <laughs> <I'm Anza. laughs> Holy fuck, dude! <laughs> time for time for nuclear winter. <laughs> oh. Do you know the cruelest thing about if the sun vanished is? Uh, what? Is that we wouldn't know, uh, for eight minutes. Oh yeah, I, f I fucking yeah, I, I knew about that. Yeah, that gravity travels at the speed of light. Yeah, so for we, the amount of time it would take for the light of the sun to reach us, we'd still be orbiting around a completely vanished star. Yep. We would just not know for like yeah. a little while. Do you know about um? Do you know about the Great Filter? <laughs> Phil, the Great Phil. <laughs> the Great Filter? Uh, no, I don't know. Oh, this is this is the this is the sad bit. The Great Filter, right? So creepy portion of the podcast uh, stream has you begun. You have made when I can stop so whenever, man. Oh no, dude! If chat are loving it, I'm I'm on this ride. I usually listen to you do this off stream, anyways. So. Oh yeah, I I talk about this stuff with you all the fucking time. <laughs> I'm very happy that um, local fifty yeah, so, is getting so, the so, love so, 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 so. The Great Filter is the theory that, that due to the fact that we've explored so much of like our reachable space you know Will like in in, in, in our solar system in our galaxy like we've reached out so far and we've emitted radio signals so far out right uh -huh. yet we've had no response from any extraterrestrial life right mm -hmm. we've had no, no we've had nothing but like and we've we've examined so many planets we found so many that can support life in the past 30 years we've gone from saying there are no planets that can support life to saying well, there are hundreds there are thousands of planets that can support life right mm -hmm. we've gone like we've really progressed in the scientific field right yet to this day there is no extraterrestrials which leaves us with three options right realistically as a nation as as a as a as a species right mm -hmm. option number 1 that we just haven't been contacted yet. They haven't done it yet. They yeah. haven't reached out to us yet because because realistically they would like the whole thing of oh what if they choose not to? It's like they would realistically. I mean come on and like <laughs> like they they would reach out and be like hello you know even. hi man <laughs> yeah want because some infinite the, energy man oh because of the theory that one of the great filters i think this is this is my, my personal theory one of the great like things that decides humanity's survival was the fact that we were aggressive right when mm. we were when we started out right we were we were super aggressive like for instance so so me and you are the ancestors of horrible violent people <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's how that's how we survived that's how on that's how our tribes lived because our tribe went and and slaughtered all the other tribes you know it's like it's not a happy fact but that's how the majority as everyone in this chat as well you know you exist everyone here exists because our ancestors were horrible people to other humans right yeah so that so with that logic right 
that the idea of aggressive expansionism is the thing that keeps people alive by that logic right aliens would also want to reach out and chat with us even if they weren't going to be violent they the, the attitude of being similar to humans in being aggressive expansionists would indicate that they'd want to interact with us correct mm -hmm. so so the idea that so the first option is they just they just haven't found us yet right uh -huh. that's number option number one that's the that's the boring option right which is the one that i don't think is true due to how much we've explored right option number two uh wait hold on i'm lost oh yeah option number two is we're first hey we're furthest ahead we are the most technologically advanced creature in the entire universe hooray you know we were the first ones we were we got in there early and we 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 went ahead and mm -hmm. became really like you know technologically advanced and here Pop we are we're, we're number one there, there are other creatures out there but they aren't as far ahead as us you know that's that's option number two option number three is the great filter uh. <laughs> now the great filter is the idea that somewhere along the line somewhere along the line of our of of of, of technological advancement something stops sentient life something kills them or something wipes them out right uh -huh. be that the idea of you know harnessing the power of the sun you know maybe that particle acceleration something it wipes out intelligent life when you get far enough down the line right so by this logic if we keep going the way we're going and we start getting to the level where we can start exploring space the chances are that something along the way is just going to kill us all is incredibly high because it must have done it to other species, right? That are out there in the world. Yeah. Right. That's the that's the depressing side of the Great Filter. Yeah. The slightly optimistic side of the Great Filter is that we've already gotten through the filter. We've already done it. <laughs> oh so this God. is the optimistic side. The optimistic side is that somewhere down the line, something we've done as human beings down the line has been incredibly hard, right? Uh -huh. So, because you may notice that there's no other sentient life on Earth, right? Every the, the, like we are the sorry, there is sentient life. There's no other intelligent life on Earth. We are the only intelligent life. The the theory is that something we figured out was really really hard, right? <laughs> and we managed to accidentally figure it out before, like, and we've 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 gotten through the filter and we're on the other side, right? So that could be, like I said before, the idea of being aggressive expansionists. That could be fire <laughs> you know <it> could <laughs> yeah. be something really difficult we figured out really early on and it's really helped us it could even be nuclear power you know it could be something that we figured out that's really helped us and put us way further ahead so let's create a hypothetical yeah. of an anti -co an anti-copyright bot created by twitch right mm -hmm. we're gonna call it muse scan right and it's an anti-copyright AI written by Twitch, right? To help combat the DMCA claims that loads of streamers are complaining about, right? <laughs> yeah. So now let's say that this AI is given one job, right? And that it's given one job with a couple rules. And that one job is to identify, uh, copy, identify non-adaptive creative works and to remove them uh, without causing damage to the thing they're removing. So, for instance, if it's in a stream, they need to remove the music without dampening the rest of the audio, you know? Right. That's its goal. That's what it's been tasked with doing, and that's its really simple aim. If it can do that, it's succeeded its job, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, they switch it on, they release it, they start, you know, giving it some AI learning, and they send it off into... I, I will say this is stolen entirely from Tom Scott. I must credit him before I go. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, just credit him, yeah. They send it out into the world, and off it goes to go and be... and, and used by... Uh, go and be used by the entirety of the Twitch community right now. Yeah. They leave it on overnight, and they come back, and uh, they find that it's not really made too much progress. But then they come back the next day, and it's made a ton of progress. It started really figuring out how to like how to like extract music. It's found out how to like examine different sounds on the internet and start pulling them out and things. 
and then the next hour it's gotten even better it started to it started to you know breed itself and create new copies of itself that are even smarter and then the next minute it started being able to pretty much effectively make it seem like nothing was ever there in the first place no music was there in the first place and then every second it's getting smarter and smarter until it has actually surpassed all other copyright detection ai before it congratulations to the ai developers are rich they've just created something that's really helped twitch and muse scan is now the biggest the biggest you know um ai for detecting copyright music yeah. absolutely wonderful right now somewhere down the line some nefarious individual or whatever you want to call it starts to develop some kind of nanotechnology that can actually take on this ai you can use the ai's open source code and start to use it in a practical real world sense it's installed into the nanotechnology and released into the world uh, quietly no one ever knows it's released and slowly but surely the ai tries to do its job it thinks right i must find non-adaptive creative works that aren't that are copyrighted and i must remove them seamlessly without any knowledge that they were there in the first place uh oh so, so the technology starts going around it starts figuring out how to write okay well i can get into this hard drive by going through this port and i can start changing around the data in this hard drive to make sure it doesn't go out and then it start, and then in the next minute, it figures out. Oh well, you know what? If I can, if I can get, if I can re reproduce enough of myself, I can actually blot out ink from a paper and make it so that the paper looks like it's a blank sheet. So I can get rid of like hard copy works. And then a bit of time later, it starts to figure out how it can get into record players, CDs, tape, tape cassettes, everything that you could possibly think of, digital hardware. It doesn't matter. Whatever it can start getting into it and silently erasing this work, right? To make sure that you know, no, it's not copyrighted. And then it figures out how to get inside people. Oh. And which would be easily the next step. I mean, where's the next place where all this creative work is stored in people's heads? Oh my God. Yeah, I start figuring out where the information is stored and, and in neurologically and starts figuring out how to wipe it without any, without actually damaging anything else. And thank God it was given the command not to damage anything else. <laughs> <laughs> because it starts going through people's heads and it starts removing all copyrighted material that isn't transformative. And slowly but surely, people start forgetting that it exists in the first place. Now, the next measure is that people out there start to realize what's going on. And some very smart minds start to come to the idea, right, we need to stop this, right? So that yeah. it starts going, right, okay, so some AI designers think, okay, we've got to develop some way of stopping it. So the AI knows that these people are now trying to block its work. They're trying to circumvent the ban, almost, right? They're trying to circumvent the DMCA claim. So the robot starts rewiring some neurons, just just quietly to make it so they're a bit less interested in AI. Maybe those AI developers that were really interested in stopping the robot are now a bit more interested in fishing. You know, maybe they're a bit more <laughs> interested in, 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 you know, studying space. You know, they're not so interested in AI development anymore, you know? And then maybe some young people who are like, who are planning, you know, who show the signs, the disposition of growing up to be interested in AI, suddenly aren't interested anymore. Now people are rightfully pissed. People are rightfully angry that they suddenly can't remember. The, the Beatles are gone from memory. No one can remember them and no one knows they existed in the first place. So people are angry. People are angry at this robot. So the AI, in the, in the AI's interest of survival reproduction, which was one of the rules that was given, it starts just cheering people up. Makes people feel a bit happier. Removes any idea that, you know, that it, that it would be an angry thing. Everyone's quite happy that the AI came about now. Fucking hell. And then we've just, <laughs> and then we've just like been like, conditions with mind controlled now and now there's no more creative work in the world but no one knows because everyone's happy with their not being any creative work <laughs> jesus dude <laughs> that is so fucked